Okay, let's go ahead and figure out this nice little math word problem. And the first uh, thing you should do when you're trying to figure out any math problem is to read it. So let's go ahead and read this problem now. So it says, uh, Ted needs to shave off three hundredths of a two inch steel bar. How many inches uh, will he need to shave off? So uh, if you think you can do this problem, go to put your answer into the comment section. Uh, feel free to use a calculator, by the way. But uh, here's the thing. Anytime you're doing any math problem, try to justify your conclusions. Just don't do this in your brain, uh, i.e. if someone says, hey, how did you figure that out? You know, and you say, well, I just did it in my mind, and you know, here's the answer. That's not going to be, you know, that's not a good practice, especially if you're trying to uh, learn mathematics. Always justify your conclusions logically, as if you needed to explain them to someone. But anyways, even if you don't think you could do this problem, you should attempt it anyways. Right? That's the only way you're going to get better at math. You never look at a problem and be like, oh, no, there's no way I could do that problem. Well, how do you know? Okay, And if you don't try uh, to solve a problem, you're never going to really, uh, sh you know, it's almost like going to the gym. If you work out with weights or something, you're like, how do you know you can, you can or cannot you know, do this amount of exercise until you try. Math is no different. It's uh, different. But uh, anyways, I'm going to show you the correct answer to this problem here in just one moment. And then we're going to go through the solution step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I absolutely love teaching mathematics. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that are having a tough time with math. If you failed in math before, if you're struggling right now, that doesn't have to uh, remain to be your situation. Okay, You can become so much better than you possibly thought in mathematics. And you, you might be th listening to me and you're like, yeah, this guy's just uh, making something up. He's just telling me what I want to hear. No, I'm not. Okay, uh, I've been teaching math again for many, many, many years. But here's the deal. Okay, If you're going to truly be successful in math, you need three things. One, you need to work hard. You need the desire to want to learn math. So you got to put in the effort. The second thing you need is some encouragement. So hopefully you have a great math teacher or somebody encouraging you along, especially if you're having a tough time. But the most important thing you need is access to math instruction you actually uh, actually understand, okay? Whoever is teaching you math, you got to understand you know what they're saying. You need clear, comprehensive math instruction. That is the most important part of learning mathematics. So, if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special exam that you're getting ready for that has math on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification exams or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different uh, math courses that span these categories and much, much more. Uh, I'm also going to leave links to my notes in the description as well. So many students out there take average notes. Okay, If you want to be above average in math, you have to take above average average notes. Some of you don't take any notes. Uh, that's how I was way back in the good old 1980s uh, when I was like, you know, not so serious about school. I would take notes, but there would be a bunch of gibberish. And, uh, half of those notes were going back and forth to my best friend that was sitting next to me. And then when I would look at my notes, I would have no idea what I wrote. So that's not, you know, that, that's not an example of effective notes. Effective notes are like like notes that you could give to your friend and the, or somebody else and they can actually learn from. Note taking is critical for your retention and focus in math. So take great math notes and everything will get much better. But in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and answer this question. So Ted needs to shave off three hundredths of a two inch uh, steel bar. How many inches will he need to shave off? Well, here is the answer. 0.06 or 3 fiftieths of an inch. Okay, so let me kind of you know think about it for a second. Here is a steel bar, and maybe you know uh, Ted is a machinist or something, and then of course they have these little mills. I believe they're what they're called, and they just kind of shave off a little bit, like so. But uh, I'll tell you uh, one thing is for sure. If uh, some of you out there are thinking to yourself or watching this video and you're like, you know what, I'm not going to college. I don't want to go to college. Listen, there's no need to go to college to be successful. You could be have a great life 
you know, without having to go to college. But even if you go into like, like the skill trades, if you're going to be an electrician or a machinist or whatnot, you're going to have to deal with mathematics, okay? Fractions, decimals, and all kinds of good stuff. So there's no escaping math. That's why you want to learn, you know, at least, uh, I would say at a minimum, basic algebra and basic geometry, even if you're not going to college, because it's going to be critical for, you know, so many careers. But anyways, uh, this would be, I guess, somewhat of a realistic prom for those of you that might be a machinist. But anyways, 0.06 or 350 of an inch, that is the correct answer. And if you got this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and a plus a 100% and a few stars to celebrate your success doing math word proms. All right, so let's go ahead and figure this thing out right now. And uh, this is not a difficult problem. I think the hardest problem part of this problem, okay, and I kind of designed it this way, is this right here, okay? This right here, three hundredths. You know, it's pretty common for um, a lot of us, you know, I'm going to say a lot of us, not me so much because I work with math every day, but uh, a lot of you out there, you know, when we talk about elementary math or basic math, you kind of forgot a lot of the stuff you learn about fractions and decimals, and that's perfectly okay. Oh, uh, okay, you need to kind of brush off and review that stuff, especially if you're going to be working with math, uh, you know, like on an ongoing basis. But we need to understand what does three hundredths mean? Okay, what does three hundredths, uh, you know, actually mean mathematically? Okay, how can we uh, create a number from that? So. We got to figure this out, right? So to find out what three hundredths of a two-inch steel bar is, we need to express three hundredths in a different way. So we're going to talk about that in a second. But the question is, how many inches will we need to shave off? So we got to figure out what three hundredths of two is. Three hundredths of two inches is. And now let's go ahead and talk about what three hundredths is. Okay, so let's just look at what this is saying. Read, let's read this fraction, okay, the way this is this fraction is uh, uh, described as words, three hundredths. So hundredths is what? Well, it sounds like a hundred to me, so this would be three out of 100. So the fraction three over 100 is three hundredths. Now, you can also um, see this as a decimal, 0 0.03, okay? This is also the decimal equivalent of 300. So if I said, hey, write 300 as a number, and I just kind of left it vague like that, you can write 300 like this, or you can write the decimal 0 0.03. This is the tenths uh, spot. This is the hundreds uh, spot. So this, you know, we're talking about a place value here. All right. So this is probably... Uh, the most confusing part of the problem, if you had any difficulties at all, is saying, hey, what does 300 mean? It means 3 out of 100, 300 or 0 0.03 300. Okay, so now that we understand that, uh, we want to find what 300 of 2 inches is. So to find, uh, uh, you know, any part of a number, okay, uh, all we need to do is multiply, right? So if I wanted to know what one half of uh, four is. What is one half of four? Well, let's just obviously think about it for a second. One half of four is two. So if I want to, you know, anytime you have uh, trouble interpreting, hey, am I doing something right? If I'm, am I approaching this problem correctly? Because we're going to take this 300 and multiply by two. But let's just uh, use a simpler version of what's going on just to, you know, ensure that we're doing this correctly. If I, if I told you find one half of four, and I take one half and I multiply it by four or four over one, I would get what? Four over two. Of course, you have to know in multiplied fractions. And four divided by two is two. Okay? So one half of four is uh, two. That's correct. So just multiply that fraction by the uh, whole that you're trying to, um, you know, you're working with. In this case, it's two inches. I want to know what three hundredths is of two inches. So I'm going to take three hundredths and multiply by two inches. So three over 100, or if you had your calculator, you can use 0 0.03. So three over 100 times two or two over one is going to be six over 100, which of course is what? It's the decimal 0 0.06 or six hundredths, but we could express this as a, as a fraction as well. We can reduce this down to three over 50. 3 50ths of an inch. So we can just uh, take that to going down 150, do a little cross canceling, and we got 3 over 50. So 
couple of different ways that we can approach this problem, but we're dealing with good old fashioned arithmetic. Okay. Even if you have your calculator, you know, your calculator isn't going to be like, you know, tell you how to do this problem. Okay. I think a lot of times uh, uh, people and students think, oh, I got a calculator. I can do any problem just because I have this calculator. That's not the case. You still need to know, you know, what to do with that calculator. Right. But uh, anyways, again, three hundredths uh, is equal to that uh, three over 100 or point zero three. Now, if you need to uh, review basic math at this level, like place value, how to uh, do basic multiplication, division, work with decimals, again, percent, and those type of things, let me uh, suggest uh, my math foundations course. If you're at this level of math, it's a nice little three-chapter mini course. It's designed to kind of brush off and review all that good stuff that we um, learned and most of us kind of forgot or at least kind of rusty with at the elementary level and some of the middle school level of mathematics because we go we get we uh, depend so much on our calculator. So if you're looking to do uh, a review, uh, I think that would be a nice uh, course for you to, uh, to kind of start off with, especially if you're looking to get back into mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.